Okay, so let's get the modeling started. The first thing I'll do is hit the light bulb next to the origin folder in the browser to show the origin planes and axes that are present in every design. This isn't required, but can help new users orient in the workspace. Next, we'll start creating geometry. There's no shortage on how to do this in Fusion 360, but let's start with the simplest, using primitives, the options you see here. I'll select Box, and as I move my mouse into the interface, it will highlight the different planes I can drop this on. From there, it's just a matter of sketching the box, which I can drive the size by keying in values. Once it's set, I'll start to see the geometry, which I can drag to a desired size, or again, key in a value. Now that I have geometry work with, I can hide the origin planes because I'll start most of my other sketches from existing faces. To insert a sketch, select the button from the toolbar, and again, before I start sketching lines on this, it's looking for a plane or planar face to work upon. And from the sketch palette that shows up, I'll click the button to look normal to it. Double click the wheel, we'll do that zoom to fit again. And if I need to pan, I'll click and hold the mouse wheel as I move from side to side. I'll sketch some lines, add a couple dimensions, and when the sketch is done, I'll stop the sketch. Hitting E will start an extrude, which is also found in the Create dropdown. And now I just need to select some profiles to either add material or cut with. I'll click and drag the arrow, but in the end, I always want this cut to go all the way through the box, no matter how it might change. So I'll set the extent here to all. At this point, I want to give this a little color, which is done from the appearances options. I'll access this by hitting the A key on the keyboard, or use the drop down under modify. And this will be used similar to materials from 123D Design. Once I find what I'm looking for, I'll drag and drop it onto the bodies or faces. Next, I'll apply some fillets, found again in the Modify dropdown. This will intelligently try to find edges, but one important thing to note is that if I key in a value to start to preview the fillet, I'll need to hold the Control or Command key, depending on operating system, to add additional edits. With the next series of fillets, I'll use the Press Pull tool, which is the top level Modify button. Press pull can do a number of things depending on the selection. If you select a profile, it'll extrude. If you select a face, it will offset. If you select an edge, it'll start filleting. We'll finish off by quickly adding the last fillet by using the keyboard shortcut of F. Now that we have some more history to inspect, let's see what we can do with it. As you already saw, I can edit any feature at any point, but I can also click and drag the roll bar back to visualize the design at an earlier state and I can even reorder features. One thing I want to do is edit the sketch, so I'll double click on it. Here I'll add some new dimensions and constraints to refine the design further. To learn more about how and why you'll want to do this, make sure to see the highly detailed sketch lessons from the Learn webpage. Next, the text will be added as a sketch and extruded. But before we finish this feature, I will change the operation from Join, which would have made the text a part of the stand, to instead make new bodies. This will make it easier to change the appearance of the text. This will make different bodies for each letter as they are disconnected, but this doesn't stop me from making them part of the same component. Bodies are really just intended for making geometry, whereas components can contain multiple bodies and will allow for assembly and have other benefits. To make the text part of one component, I'll first add a new component, give it a name, and before I finish, I want you to note that I will set it to be active. We'll talk about what that is in a little while. With the new component created, I'll find it in the browser. To get the text to be a part of it, all I need to do is shift select them from the bodies folder and drag and drop them into the component. Now I want to make the top level component active. To do this, all I need to do is select the toggle next to its name. This changes the display of the model, but also what's shown in the history timeline. As your models get more complex, you'll want to ensure components are created early and that they include all the steps and features used in building them. This is known as rule number one. Seeing that the text is now a component, it will slide as I click and drag it. Components are treated like parts that make up a larger assembly. The new creation can be stored in the timeline by capturing the position, or we can revert to where it was made. Before we can join these components together, the stand and the text, I first need to convert the stand to a component. I'll do this in a slightly different way, I'll rename the body, then right mouse click and select Create Components from Body. Now it's free to slide, but I'll undo that move to revert to where it was created. 
The reason I want to do that is because I can now join these components together with the simple to use as built joints. Joints will affix components to one another, but also allow for certain motion to be opened up. As I add these and define the reference to slide or rotate about, it will animate the motion. I'll settle for a rigid joint, as that best describes how these components will be connected. A rigid joint icon will now be found in the graphics area, the timeline, and contained in the browser. That's all for now. In the next video, we'll make some advanced features and break into a new workspace.